Okay, quick little segment just to talk a bit about how I do large photo encaustic art. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's my birthplace. It's how I found my voice and my fluency to feel like I could really create something that people would understand and recognize and even resonate with and identify with. So a little bit about that. When I first started painting, I tried just a tick of watercolors. That was fun. I didn't spend much time there, but I had to do one big piece. It was the silhouette of um, the, the back of this woman, and it was just so serene and beautiful, and I loved it. And my roommate, roommates, she said, only you would go out and buy one big, huge watercolor paper and do the whole thing. And it worked out. I was really um, focused on that. Then I moved over to acrylics and I found that the fluidity was fun. The abstract nature of them for me was fun. I was still craving more um, texture and how to build up the layers more. That's what I kept craving. And then I found my way to encaustics. And so I started playing in encaustics and I was doing um, very tone on tone simple pieces, which Ironically, I'm probably going back to you, but that isn't that the way life works. Um, and I loved just the meditative element of layer, fuse, layer, fuse, layer, fuse. And then, I don't know what it was, probably finding some other work out there and hearing photo encaustic or learning about it a little, but even before then, I had some printouts of some pears and some really beautiful figs, ripe, juicy, curvy figs. And so I adhered them on my panels and let them dry, which is still how I do it. I printed them on matte paper so it would drink up the uh, waxes, no, no film on it. And then I started painting over the figs and the pears and I thought, what do you know? I can execute the color, I can execute the shape, the nuance, the little chartreuse, chartreuse green I can still picture right where the stem is, or those beautiful hints on the outside of a fig that are brown like leather or, you know, lavender like Italian plums that remind me of being a kid at my grandma's. And I started to paint these juicy fruit figs and pears and I could almost just Mm, want to eat them it was so exciting to me and people would look at it and say that's a pear that's a beautiful pomegranate so I started to get this confidence not being someone who's very good at sketching or drawing or anything like that I found my confidence with photo encaustics so I am still loving it today it is how I reach into my large animal and wildlife art it's how I reach into the most dreamy, magical, snow-capped mountains with the little ice trails. I can't remember the French name for those. It will come to me, those ice trails. And um, it's how I have managed to get into painting loosely realistic images, if that makes sense. Now, I have worked with the loveliest graphic design person and people over the years, whereby I do get help working up imagery, sometimes with abstraction, digitally in Photoshop before I do a piece. So there is that, and that has helped me tremendously. Um, more and more, if you gave me, say for example, a bare photo, um, I would print it, but I could still probably execute it pretty loosely because I'm getting more comfortable with saying fur doesn't have to be perfect, noses aren't perfect, teeth and jaw lines aren't perfect, or antlers or hair. You know, I don't do portraits, but antlers don't have to be perfect. It's all okay. But that's what I wanted to tell you. That's how I got into it. And now just a few tidbits about how I do it and then you'll get to see all the rest of the studio.